What's up guys, this is Marcus from Studio One Expert and today we're gonna to be having a look at scenes within the console. So some of you may have noticed at the very bottom of the console here, when we are uh, viewing the channel list, we have this little drop down menu here and then we've got a lock beside it, we've got a plus and a minus. And then our little window here with the tips shows us add scene, remove active scene, and we can lock and then we have this drop down menu. So if you were ever wondering what those were, that's what we're gonna be going over today. So Studio One offers a lot of different ways for us to keep organized. But one of the most powerful features that I think a lot of people don't realize is that you can have custom views for your console. And then through different grouping options that we have in this wrench icon, we can even you know get deeper into it and when we start linking the show and hide of track list and console. But for now, we're not gonna get into that too much. I just wanna talk about scenes. So let's talk about scenes. Well, what are scenes? Well, simply put, scenes give you the ability to store uh, a track view that you wanna see in your console. So for instance, right now, if I was to, um, let me just hide this for a second. Let's go to narrow view. These are all the channels I have open. We'll go over them really, really quickly. So I've got a kick in, kick out, kick sub, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hats, rack tom, floor tom, overhead left and right, and a room. Then I've got a drum verb, which is just a reverb for my drums. Then I've got a bass DI, a bass amp, piano track, chorus for the piano, a synth track. I've got a rhythm guitar one, rhythm guitar two. I've got a lead guitar, uh, two tracks, one with an SM57, the other with a Royer 121. And then I've got three effects tracks for the guitars, lead guitar delay, a delay slap. And then I've got, sorry, that's, a, that's an instrument verb that I'm gonna be using for my synth, my guitars, my piano, just to kind of put everybody in the same room. Then we've got a main vocal, uh, main vocal harmony. We've got a reverb and two different delays. One is a slap and the other one is a delay throw in case I want to automate anything. Then I've got four background vocals and then I've got a background vocal reverb and a background vocal chorus. So what I want to be able to do here is I want to have some different views stored. And these are totally independent of uh, creating bus tracks and creating folders and packing folders. So there's a video that David did a while back if you wanna catch up on that, that you can check that out. But what this specifically has to do with is giving yourself different views within your mixer. So we all know that if we click the channel list here that I can deselect and select different types of tracks that I wanna view. So for instance, now I'm viewing all my audio tracks. If I wanted to just view my effects tracks, I could do that. If I wanted to just view my buses, I could do that. I don't have any buses right now. So this is one way that we can kind of stay organized in our session. But let's say that you have a couple of different views that you like to see. So for instance, when I'm mixing the drums, let's say that I wanted to see just my drums and any effects tracks that are pertinent to the drums. Then we could also say, well, when I'm mixing my background vocals or my vocals, I want to see the main vocal, the vocal harmony, any effects tracks that are pertinent to those tracks, and then all my four background vocal tracks. So what we can do here is we can set up different scenes so that when we're mixing, we can swap between them. So the first thing that I like to do, and usually the very first scene that I'll set up is a default view. And when I say default view, that means every track that I have active. So if I have all of these tracks here, let's say that I wanted to set this up as my default. So all we have to do here is we have to head to the add scene, click the plus icon, and then we can name the scene. So let's name this all tracks. And I'm gonna put this little symbol here as well. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. So now I also have the option here to be able to lock this. And we're gonna get back to this in a moment. So the next scene that I want to set up here is I want to set up a view that just gives me all of my drum tracks and the effects that are pertinent to my drum tracks. So for that, we're going to make sure that all of these are visible and then our drum verb. And you know what? I'm going to take everything else out of the equation. And I'm going to scroll down and let's hide the rest of these as well. So now we're looking at just our drum tracks and the drum verb. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus icon and let's say drums and effects. I'm gonna click okay. And now what I wanna do here is I wanna lock this view. So 
Now you notice in our drop down menu here, we have different options. So the first option we have is all tracks. So let's click that. So now we're seeing all of our tracks. Now, if I want to see just my drum tracks, I can select this little drop down arrow here and click drums and effects. So now we're just looking at the drum tracks and the effects. So this is where the lock icon is going to come into play. Let's say we're mixing our drums and we wanted to make an adjustment to the bass tracks while listening to our drums. So for instance, I have my kick drums all soloed out, all three of these tracks over here. And then I say, well, it would be really nice if I was EQing my kick while listening to my bass. So temporarily, I could make the bass DI and the bass amp track available so that if I needed to make any adjustments to these two while I'm adjusting the balance of my kicks and then I could select the other tracks here and move these all together as one, either up or down. Let's say I was happy with the adjustments I made there but I wanted to go back to viewing all of my tracks for a second. So I could head back here but now the next time I want to view just my drums we're going to be given that default view without the bass tracks. If I wanted to add the bass tracks into my drum view, I could simply unlock this over here, make these two tracks visible, and then relock it. So this is kind of like updating the scene, the active scene that we're working on. All right, so let's create another view here. Let's go back to our all view again, all tracks. And this time, let's say I want to view all my guitars. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all of the tracks that aren't anything to do with the guitars and let's hide them. Let's get rid of them. And I want all the effects that have anything to do with the guitars. So I'm going to get rid of all of these and we'll scroll down, make sure that we're only viewing the tracks that have something to do with the guitars. So I've got a rhythm guitar. Let's just call it a left and a right. And then I've got a lead, two different microphones. I'm happy with my blend. And then I've got the effects that are pertinent to my guitar tracks. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new scene. Let's call this Guitars and Effects. All right, so now we've got our Guitars and Effects scene. So what I can do with this particular case is I can lock this scene. Now, we're going to move back to our All Tracks view. So now already we have three different scenes that we can toggle between. And we can do that by just clicking this little drop-down menu over here. So if I want to make some adjustments to my guitars quickly, I just hit Guitars and Effects. Now this becomes really, really powerful. Let's say that we have a, uh, let's go into our All Tracks view here for a second. And let's say that we have these things grouped out to maybe vocals and percussion, drums and percussion, and you know as many subgroups as we want. We could make a subgroup view where we can create a scene for that. And then essentially we're taking a, our session and it could be a hundred tracks, it could be 50, could be 20. And we're now having control over our session with maybe five faders or however many faders you decide you wanna break out your subgroups into. So let's quickly create one more scene here. So I'm gonna create a group for just vocals. And what that's gonna be is just my vocals and any effects that have anything to do with vocals. So let's scroll down here. I'm just swiping across this, these little circle tabs over here to make these invisible. And now I'm listening to, I'm looking at all of my vocals. So I've got my main vocal, my main vocal harmony, the reverb and both delays that are associated with this vocal. And then I've got my all of my background vocals. And let's just say that these are panned out, something like that. And then I've got the two effects chains that are for my background vocals. So now I want to create a new scene and let's call this Vox and Effects. I'm gonna click OK. And let's go ahead and lock this scene. Okay, so now let's take this and go one step further with it. If any of you have watched any of my videos, you'll know that I don't like using a mouse. And if there's a way I can program a keyboard shortcut in order to make my life a little bit easier and to get off the mouse, I'll do it. So if we head over to Studio One and Keyboard Shortcuts, and we just click the keyword Scene, you'll notice that we have within the console, we have Next Scene and Previous Scene. And I've chosen to map that out to Option, Command, I'm on a Mac, and left bracket and right bracket. So my right bracket is gonna give me the next scene. 
and my left bracket is going to give me the previous scene. So now, as I'm in my session here, I can quickly toggle between all these different active scenes. So here's one where I'm looking at all the tracks, and we can just keep our eye on the very bottom left here. This is all tracks, then I have my drums and effects, then I've got my guitars and effects, and then I've got my vocals and effects. And then I could have one for my keys, my instruments. I could have one that's just effects. And we can also use these little tabs here to make things easier. So if I wanted to take uh, right now, if I wanted to go into all tracks, and then what I could do here is I could hide all the audio tracks. So I'm just looking at my effects. Then I could create a scene over here and call this effects only. I'm going to click OK and let's lock that scene. So now I can very, very quickly toggle between all these different views, just like that. So if I want to mix all the tracks, I want to have a bird's eye view of the whole session, I can do that. If I want to scroll over to drums and effects, and I'm doing this just by hitting my keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you'd rather see all of the tracks in the arrange window, all we have to do is make sure that our link show hide track list and console is deselected. Now, if I go back to the main view over here, all tracks, and let's just make sure that everything is visible on this side here. Now I'm still able to see and edit all of my tracks in the arrange window, but if I want to simplify my console view, I can do so just by going through my active scenes. And I can hide this menu over here. And now I'm just keeping things nice and simple. Anyways, so that's using the active scenes and storing scenes within Studio One. And I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.